All right, hello again, everyone. It's good to be back with you. We're looking at uh, uh, continuing in our Bible study of Revelation. Um, we are going to pick up where we left off in chapter 15 uh, at verse 5. Uh, before, before we do that, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks. We give you uh, all of our adoration. Dear Lord, you are more than worthy of whatever we can give, yet we give it as humbly as we can. Uh, and we pray that you would bless us you have done so so many times before and and we ask for yet more blessings as we study your word lord we just aren't studying this for knowledge but rather lord we are studying it to draw closer to you and be better able to serve you help us with your holy spirit now in jesus christ's name we pray amen and amen Revelation chapter 15, looking at the bowl judgments. And right now, at the beginning of verse 5 and 6, uh, uh, seven angels are distinctly clothed. Uh, let's look at what the scripture says. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen and having their chests girded with golden bands all right <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the temple the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven uh, reminds us that the tabernacle God told Moses to build was based on a heavenly pattern. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, the temple of the tabernacle here refers to the heavenly reality of the tabernacle, not the earthly copy. That's what Moses uh, uh, put together was an earthly copy. Uh, but God uh, told him to and, and described it in great detail, but now it's the real thing. One day we're going to look at it. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. It says, uh, out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues. Uh, these angels bring God's judgment. God's judgment. It's, it's significant that they came directly from God's temple, the heavenly temple, from the presence and throne of God. They do not act on their own authority, but rather in response to the direction of God. Pure, bright linen, it says, their chests girded with golden bands, the, their clothing. This was a reminder of God's judgment is always pure and always righteous. You and I, uh, unfortunately, we do more judging. We shouldn't be judging too much, should we? Uh, but uh, when God does it, it's a righteous judgment. It's perfect. There are not like them these are not like the anti-hero or vigilante who sink out uh, down to the level of the criminals they fight no uh, god is a holy god and he righteously uh, declares judgment revelation uh, verse 7 and 8 of chapter 15. now the bowls are given the cloud of God's glory fills the temple. Here's what it says. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. 
the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Oh, what an awesome sight this is. The whole, well, the whole book is awesome. And the, the clear pictures that we see, uh, uh, you know, some people just wave it off, say, well, that's not for us. It was written for us. It was given to us. Uh, it says seven bo uh, golden bowls. These bowls are broad. Flat bowls or saucers used virtual, rit ritually for drinking or for pouring libations in sacrifice. The contents of such uh, shallow bowl uh, were quickly, easily, and completely poured out. It reminds me of my my grandfather. He every morning uh, at the at the table, uh, my grandmother pour him up a cup of coffee, and uh, he always poured some of it in the saucer. I never understood that, but here we go. Uh, that's what's going on here. Uh, it was poured in the saucer. Uh, it says the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. Uh, when the cloud of glory fills the temple in heaven, no one can enter. Uh, it was the same when Moses could not enter the tabernacle when the smoke of the clouds, cloud of God's glory, sometimes called the Shekinah, filled uh, the tent and we read about that in Exodus 40, 34 and 35. All right, it says, filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. Both the bowls and the cloud came from the glory of God and from his power. This is a reminder of God's special presence and glory, even in the midst of devastating judgment. No one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. All right. This declares that judgment was now irreversible. You know, there are th you know, uh, judgment is irreversible. Without Christ, uh, there is no return. You know, once you once you're dead, and if you die without Christ, it's over with. Nothing can hinder here uh, this judgment any longer, because access to this temple in heaven would not long be denied. All right, this concludes uh, uh, chapter 15, and we're going to move right on to chapter 16. Uh, you know that I don't. In the original, this was not separated. This was a this was a letter, not with chapters and verses, folks. This was a letter. All right, the revelation. Well, not a letter. It, it was a it was a revelation. Pardon me. It was not a a, a, a letter. It was not, a, this is not an epistle. This is a revelation, a declaration from Christ himself. All right, the bowl judgments. Uh, their, their bowls are directed against natural phenomena. Chapter 16, verse 1, a voice from the temple. Then I heard, it says, a voice. I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. All right, then I heard a loud voice from the temple, it said. Since no one could enter the temple, we just read that in chapter 15, verse 8, uh, this loud voice from the temple must be God himself, uh, who personally initiates the horrific judgment of the bowls. Now, the bowl judgments are... are, are much greater than in their their uh, ferocity, uh, much greater than 
uh, the trumpet judgments and the seal judgments, bowl judgments. You know, this is this is as bad seemingly as it gets. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he says, uh, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. These bowls of judgment are the third woe. The woe is judgment. This is the third woe described in chapter 11, verse 14. Because they are described as the wrath of God, uh, they are chastisements with the purpose of bringing repentance. All the judgments were to bring repentance as much as punishments. Uh, repentance was, was uh, you know, a punishment is, is due, but uh, repentance is is expected or hoped for. Uh, this was uh, uh, with the purpose of dispensing just, justice. All right. Um, it says, on the earth, those who believe the book of Revelation is all fulfilled in history have a hard time with this. Uh, in Poole's commentary, his suggestions on what earth might mean show how difficult it is to make sense of Revelation in that way. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can fantasize all you want, uh, but there's no way this has taken place in, in uh, history. None, nothing parallels it. Uh, all right, the point is clear. If the earth doesn't mean earth, then no one can tell what it means, and God may as well not have written it. When he says earth, it's earth. Death is death. Life is life, you know. Uh, verse 2, the first bowl, foul, foul, and loathsome sores. It says, so the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Ooh. Take a little sip here. All right. The foul and loath loathsome sore. This is not my language, is it? Uh, it's the language of, of the Bible came upon the men who had the mark of the beast. Those who worshiped the beast and received his mark are now marked by God for loathsome sores. You look up that word, loathsome, L-O-A-T-H-S-O-M-E, sores. Verse three, the second bowl. Uh, the sea is turned to blood. It says, Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died, every one of them. The sea became blood, described a partial contamination of the sea. Here the contamination, that's in Revelation 8. Uh, here, the contamination is made complete. Every living creature in the sea died. Can you imagine that? Every thing in the sea dies. Then it says, speaks of the blood as of a dead man. The sea doesn't necessarily become blood, but as of a corpse's blood. It will match the appearance and sickening character of the blood in a dead body. I don't even want to try to imagine that, do you? Verse 4, the third bowl, fresh waters are polluted. Then the third angel, it says in verse 4, then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of waters, and they became blood. 
the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. This complete contamination, in contrast to the partial one-third pollution of fresh water shown in Revelation 8, uh, 10 through 11. This is a complete contamination of all the rivers, of all the lakes, uh, of all the fresh water, that would include the springs that would, you know, uh, that would include uh, all water. Oh. Says they became blood. When these judgments uh, come, the first, the time must be very short until the return of Jesus. With ecological disasters such as this, the human race cannot survive very long. It will not make it without divine intervention. Verse 5 through 7. This is These are gruesome pictures, aren't they? Nevertheless, you know, we, we are going to see some beautiful pictures. We're going to see both, both sides of the coin. Uh, but this is the devastating side. This is the dark side. This is the side of of um, judgment for, for the unprepared. And then it says in verse 5 uh, through 7, And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. For it is their just due, and I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Hmm. All right, let's look at this a little closer. You are righteous, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It's really completely fitting that those who delighted in shedding the blood of saints should now be forced to drink blood. They refused the living water and now will be given death, death to drink. It says, you are righteous, O Lord, even in the midst of judgment. It is right that the angel says this. Not only is God's justice fair, it is also pure and appropriate. There is no vigilante justice at all with God. It says, I heard another from the altar saying, uh, this voice is either an angel speaking uh, from the altar or the altar personified, representing the corporate testimony of the mor martyrs, uh, Revelation 6, 9, and the per prayers of the saints, Revelation 8, 3 through 5. All right. Time to fuel up a little bit more. Makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, Revelation 16, 8, and 9. The fourth bowl. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues and did not repent. And give him glory. They didn't repent. And that was the purpose. Get their attention. You, you know. They refused to repent. And give him glory. It says the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Uh, what is normally taken for granted as a blessing. Uh, the warmth of the shining sun. Is now. A curse, you know. The sun can be a great blessing. 
Now it's a curse. I like it when the sun shines. It's a curse when I'm out in it for too long. I blister. Their reason for it being a curse is quite a bit different, isn't it? They did not repent and give him glory, it says. The failure of men to respond repentance with repentance shows that knowledge or experience of judgment will not change man's sinful condition. Those who are not won by grace will never be won. Knowledge will never save you. Knowing the way to be saved, knowing who Jesus is, knowing what he's done, knowing what is required of you in response, won't make it. It won't get it. A lot of people think that, you know, I know how to be saved. I, I go to church and I know all about that stuff. But unless you've repented and called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul, You're in trouble. I, have to, I could preach here, but I won't. All right. Now bowls directed against the beast and his government. The fifth bowl. This is a plague of darkness. A plague of darkness. Then the fifth bowl. Or the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. There it is again. All right, his king, let's look at that. His kingdom became full of darkness. Some see this as a, a symbolic dark. Uh, uh, I don't know how they do that. It says darkness. You know, the world spiritually is dark right now. Uh, but this, I believe, is, it's going to be physically dark. It says they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. In darkness of the fifth bowl, uh, uh, this darkness is a preview of hell itself, which is described by Jesus as the, what does he say? The outer darkness. That's what G Jesus describes hell as. Those under the judgment of this fifth bowl stand, as it were, on the shores of the lake of fire. Outer darkness. Hell is dark. A lot of people think there's plenty of light. There is fire. <laughs> you know, there's a lake of fire. But hell is dark. You know. You can get burned without seeing the fire. Think about that for a minute, we. says, they did not repent of their deeds in our text here. In man's sinful condition... He increases his sin when under God's judgment, the very time he should forsake his sin. Turn, be born again, be saved. But he refuses, doesn't he? All right. At this time, I'd ask if there are any questions. We're not going to finish this. But we're going to get a little further into it. The sixth bowl. Armies are gathered for a great battle. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. And its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs 
coming out of the mouth of the dragon, now the mouth of the beast, now the mouth of the false prophet. Ugh. And they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, he says, listen up, he says, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to a place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Armageddon. You know, there have been movies uh, entitled Armageddon. They have nothing to do with this Armageddon. And then there are some movies and books that have been written about uh, Armageddon. And, uh, and they take a little bit of truth and it ha add a whole bunch of falsehood and end up with something that is uh, void of God. We're going to look at Armageddon in closer detail. Uh, this was a whole lot uh, to read, and it's certainly a, a whole lot more uh, to cover. I'll, I'll mention a few things before we close this. It says, the great river Euphrates, the Romans considered the Euphrates River to be a secure barrier against invasion from empires of the east. And that day it was 1,800 miles, 2,900 kilometers long and anywhere from 300 to 1,200 yards wide. Uh, its water, it says, was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Uh, and the Euphrates, if it's dried up and made a road, massive armies from the east, nations such as China and India and Japan could move westward without uh, any uh, hesitation. Right now it would be difficult. <laughs> you know, there are natural barriers. So. World War II. Uh, America was uh, sheltered by the Atlantic Ocean and also the Pacific. I know Hawaii got hit, Honolulu did, but uh, that was one time. And <coughs> the ocean presented a, a great obstacle to uh, all the uh, warring parties against uh, America. Uh, and there are other natural barriers, aren't there, uh, that we could uh, get much into. I'm going to hold up here. We ain't got very far. We're going to come back and uh, to Revelation 16, probably verse, uh, I don't know, 13 or so. Uh, but before we go, I want you to be thinking about what we've just read. I want you to allow it to uh, sink deep into your, your mind. Because if nothing else, this here should cause you to be alarmed for the lost and do something about it. That's the truth. But God wants you to know it. Nothing would be a surprise to us uh, except what God himself reveals. And he's revealed much to us in this text that he doesn't reveal to non-believers. All right, let's bow our head. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you gratitude. Now as we uh, close this Bible study, help us 
to consider, meditate, and think on your word. Not be scared, but to be saved and help others to be likewise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.